Hi guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we have an amazing, literally an amazing smartphone review for you. I'm excited about this. It has pretty much the best specs going at the moment on the market and that includes things like the Samsung SA. The rough price as an approximate, just to let you know, is around half the price of a Samsung S8. So I've also got information about my brand new giveaway for July 2017. I have a different product. It's not an Android box now. It's something a little bit different, but I think you'll enjoy it. So let's get straight into the video. Hi guys, it's SBRT and welcome back to a brand new video. Like I said, today we're talking a smartphone which has the latest specs. It's right up there with the Samsung S8, but it's around half the price and that is exactly what you guys are going to want to see. First off, like I said, giveaway time and this is the video we're going to do it in for July. The giveaway competition winner will be walking away with this Android tablet. Uh, I haven't actually reviewed it yet, but I will be doing very, very soon because it is a fantastic product and it is affordable for you guys as well. So none of this spending a fortune on tablets. I think it's under $100, so absolutely great for you guys. So it's this Android tablet here, and of course it's in champagne gold, which is quite a nice little color as well. So that can be yours. So all you have to do is like and share the video, subscribe and hit the notification button next to this video if you're new to the channel. Do the exact same thing on my second channel as well, which I'll leave listed here and of course in the description below and as always just let me know in the comment section below that you've done that and of course why you would like this tablet and again i will randomly select one of you guys to be walking away with this at the end of july so get to it but right now we are talking like i said smartphones there are two smartphones at the moment in time which are roughly around half the price of the flagship samsung s8 but have very very similar specs and one of them is the oneplus 5 which I'm looking to get my hands on very, very soon to review for you to... To, the, no, <laughs> to review... I don't know why I just punched myself in the face. To review for you guys. But it's not that one. I'm going to be doing a comparison with that one to this one. It is the Xiaomi Mi 6. By far, like I said, it has the best specs going at the moment in time. And, and it's so much cheaper than the Samsung S8. So, so first off, we'll stay on this camera and I'll show you from here. Okay, so this is, of course, the Xiaomi Mi 6 and it is absolutely brilliant to use. We're just going to talk about the design first and then obviously we'll jump onto the specs and the features and everything like that. First off to note, from behind, not in that way, but from the back, from the back, it looks beautiful it's a lovely glossy display as you can see here the lovely little logo there this is obviously glass and metal design as you can see on here uh, it does also come in ceramic as well but this is actually a metal one um, so it does it varies in price slightly i think the ceramic one is slightly more and it's got like and the one that's ceramic has got like gold around the uh, the cameras as well so the front to me personally, I would have liked to have seen something slightly different in terms of the design because the front looks slightly dated. It looks more like an iPhone 6 slash 7 kind of thing. Um, so not amazing, but by no means poor. Um, it's still a you know a very, very premium feeling phone in the hand and it's really it's quite heavy as well. Um, so which is a good thing because it feels very, very premium, but as well, it is heavier than the iPhone 6, for example, but the same sort of size. Um, so it, you know, if you want a really light phone, this isn't for you. If you want a chunky feeling premium phone then this is the phone for you chunky but not massive because as you can see here it's still quite a thin phone as well so it's not like a brick we're on to the talking about the screen it is a full 1080p ips panel so it isn't 4k and it isn't amoled or oled but uh, for me personally in terms of smartphones with the screen this size i beg anyone to be able to generally tell a much difference between a full 1080p and a 4k screen uh, i'm sure some of you guys out there will say you can and that's fine don't get this phone it's not a 4k screen but for me personally i can't see you know it is a really really sharp phone in terms of the actual you know viewing angles are really nice as well you know it it's really bright in daylight as well you know much better in uh, in low light as well as you can see it scrolls right down the phone that i reviewed last time the note 2 again had an issue with the actual uh, dimness it couldn't go as dim as i wanted it for nighttime reading and then of course like i said once you go into read mode for example uh, and you go right down it's it's you know it's 
great for nighttime viewing. Now looking at the screen here, you are looking at a uh, Android 7.1.1, like I said. So you've got all of the functions from Android 7.1.1, for example, but it is running the OS of Mi UI 8, which is the latest UI from uh, Xiaomi. Mixed opinions about the actual OS. Some people, you know, similar to Samsung, they use TouchWiz, um, not stock Android. This isn't stock Android, it's Mi UI. Uh, it's very similar, in my opinion, to iOS. So if you are, uh, again, an Apple fan, but looking to transfer to Android, then this is definitely one of the best phones that you could possibly look to do, because not only does it basically look like an iPhone in the hand and the, and the shape of it and the actual size, but the actual OS is also very similar to iOS, uh, but obviously you get all the functions and all the usability of Android. No excuse these days, people. If you want an Android phone, but you're used to at Apple, then get this phone. You will not go wrong. It is a 5.15 inch display, um, so you can hold it in one hand, no problems. As you can see here, I've got like quite girly hands to be honest, but I can hold it, no problems whatsoever. Some of the other phones that I've used in the past, the phablets and things like that, the plus size versions of different phones, I find them almost impossible to hold with one hand. This one, again, absolutely great. So if you're one of these people who wants to jump from an iPhone to an Android, but not sure which one to get, this has amazing specs, which you'll get to, but also it feels in the hand like a, the size of an iPhone. Uh, iPhone. Have you seen the new iPhone? Um, feels like the size of an iPhone 6, so you get the idea of how big it is. So in terms of the specs, it has a Quadcom Snapdragon 835 processor, 2.4 gigahertz, and that's of course an octa-core processor. The Snapdragon 835 at this moment in time is... Uh, basically the best on the market. Obviously, Samsung S8 usually do two different varieties, the Exynos and also the Snapdragon. Of course, the Snapdragon they use in that variety is the 835, so you're getting the same processor as the Samsung S8. So it is one of the best snappy phones you are ever going to use in, until a year's time when it's even better. Of course, because that's how phones work. You've always got the best and then a new one comes out. Six gigabytes of DDR4 RAM as well. So again, moving between apps, etc., is absolutely flawless. And it, you don't have the problem with some phones that kind of refresh the apps and you know you have to start the app again. You don't have any of these problems. It, it just constantly maintains where you were in the background, which you would expect from six gigabytes of RAM. But again, it's very important to some people that that is the case and, and you are gonna get that with this. This variant comes with 65 gigabytes of storage. Um, there is 120. 28 gigabyte storage uh, option as well which is more expensive so that's for people who need a lot of storage because you can't actually add uh, an SD card to this unfortunately it is a dual sim but there is no option for an SD card it comes with Bluetooth 5.0 and the battery life uh, which is which is usually a sticking point for a lot of people um, it comes with a 3350 milliamp battery um, and obviously with the new software updates from Android it is running Android 7.1.1 so you get all of the best battery saving features with that and of course that battery for this size screen is actually pretty good. It does hold uh, with solid use. I use it pretty solidly. It's pretty solidly. I tend to hammer it with YouTube, Kodi, you know, Twitter, Instagram, and it does tend to hold a charge right through the day, right, you know, till around sort of mid 11 midnight, and then I want to whack it on charge. It's not fully depleted, but so that's it. You get an idea of how good the actual battery life is. Not as good as the phone that I reviewed in this video here, which I'll link, which is by far the best battery I've ever used 4000 milliamp battery, and it's a, a phablet again from Xiaomi, uh, but it's the Note 2 version. Slightly less specs than this one in terms of like the Snapdragon 820, which is still an amazing. Uh, processor but obviously the battery was the big pull for me so if you are in the market for a phone with a um, a bigger screen and a better battery then uh, have a look at that video but for pure specs this one is because it's a newer phone it's six months newer fast charging is also something that you can do with this so again you can charge the phone roughly from naught to full in, in about an hour so again that's a great thing to have especially like i said with how good the battery is you may only need to just pump it up for a few hours you know just give it a bit of juice for 20 minutes and you'll you'll almost have half a charge there so great ir blaster on the front for those people who want to annoy everyone and turn everyone's tvs off when they're watching it i'm always doing it to my friends and family whether they're watching something just and off. 
I don't. I'm not. I'm annoying, but I'm not that annoying. Okay, so one major downside for a lot of people will, of course, be the no headphone jack. There is nothing on here uh, to do with headphone jack. You will have to use the USB Type C there. Unfortunately, I don't mind it personally, other than one thing which I'll get to. I don't mind the switch from no headphone jacks, but I know a lot of people uh, don't like it at all. So that is one thing to consider. They do actually offer in the box an adapter that you can obviously then plug from the uh, USB C port there into uh, a headphone jack no problem whatsoever so you can easily uh, you don't have to go and buy specific headphones for that but of course the main downside of that is that if you are charging it you can't listen to music unless you use bluetooth headphones so again that might be where a lot of phones are trying to go but i prefer to be able to use headphones and charge it at the same time so that is the one major downside in my opinion i don't actually have the adapter on me because it's in the other room but what i will show you what else you get in the box so it does come with which is pretty cool uh, a case uh, so obviously and you just slap that on there little silicon case uh, you can still see through the back so that's nice it's nice and sleek and it just keeps the back from getting scratched although actually the material on the back it's handled scratches pretty well to be honest i've kind of been bashing it about a little bit and i've not actually received any real scratches on here um, so it's, it is a pretty good material actually uh, on the back but of course fingerprints all over the show but that's like with all major phones these days as well as obviously the case you get in the box you also get the uh the manual and the sim ejector as well there um and then obviously your charger in there as well your charger and your cable comes in it as well so it's i've got a little bit of an unboxing for you there as well one great thing about the xiaomi phone that some phones don't offer is something called second space and second space is where you can basically on the same sim card on the same phone have two completely different operating setups so you can have two different accounts uh, with different apps on different settings you can you know lock them via password and fingerprint sensor and everything like that so you can literally have two different phones on one phone so again it's something that xiaomi do on a lot of their phones and i think is definitely something that puts it apart from other phones of a similar ilk fingerprint sensor is one of the fastest i have ever used it is absolutely flawless so i'm going to turn it off and then i'm on turn it off and then i'm on turn it off and then i'm on it's literally ridiculous like the one thing to note as well the actual button just focus there isn't a button it is completely flat it doesn't click so that'll be something you need to get used to if you're used to clicking a home button this doesn't do that it's not just the sensor though so it still works in exactly the same way so if you're on google and of course you click on it it will still go back to the home page it just won't click it's a great bit of technology and something to get used to though if you are used to a clicking home button right so on to camera now the camera is absolutely brilliant as well as you can imagine with most things on this phone it is a really really good phone uh, it's got a 12 megapixel dual camera so it's got so it's got a wide angle 12 megapixel and a telephoto 12 megapixel as well obviously the advantages of the dual camera setup are well documented you've got a single button there to zoom and that uses that telephoto lens you've also got this button here which is called a uh, portrait portrait mode so it basically blurs the background if you're doing portraits on people on humans it's great it's a great way of actually giving a bit of a halo shine around the person and, and blowing out the background and it looks absolutely great it's not the most responsive out of all of these versions of camera software out there some phones do it slightly better i will admit uh, but it is an option that is there uh, that you can use now the selfie camera here which i'm just doing here it actually tells me my age of 27 i will take that because i'm not 27 so thank you very much for that that is a 8 megapixel i'm talking to you now that is <laughs> this is weird double double doubling up this is a 8 megapixel front camera shooter and again works absolutely brilliantly uh low light situation is not quite as good it is slightly grainy and low light but in pure daylight again the quality is great for a selfie shooter there's also lots of different modes on here as you can see that you can scroll between so you've got obviously usual suspects of panorama manual uh, tilt shift uh, square beautify but also this straightened one i quite like i think this is a pretty good bit of software so basically anywhere you turn your phone it will straighten the shot so if you're going if you're moving when you're taking photos this is a great way of making sure that the actual shot remains sort of flat which is great obviously video recording on this is good as well you can run in 4k uh, but only up to 30 frames per second so it might get a little bit juttery if you're doing high speed 
you know, sports things, filming to do with 4K, but normal 4K footage, walking around, taking, you know, little um, slow movement videos in 4K, you will have no problems whatsoever and it will be a very, very good quality. So we've seen everything about this phone pretty much. I'm now going to run a benchmark test for you and you are going to be amazed at the scores that come back. And I'm also going to try and find a Samsung S8 benchmark test and compare it to that as well, just to let you know roughly where we're up to with this absolute gem of a phone. So I ran two benchmark tests on this phone. The first one is a Geekbench test and it scored, uh, as you can see there, 1923 on the single core and 6726 on the multi-core. So the single core isn't the best thing about this phone. I'm struggling to think of a phone that has a higher multi-core score than this at 6726. It's just ridiculous. So anything moving between apps, gaming, movie streaming, any of that sort of stuff is going to be absolutely incredible on this phone. And then of course the other test, as you can see here, was of course the Antutu test, which I do do quite a lot. I do do. No? I do quite a lot on this channel for Android boxes and things like that. And as you can see, that score is absolutely incredible. When we're talking about Android boxes, we're talking anywhere between 30,000 and probably, you know, 80, 90,000. I mean, this is 180,345. It is just ridiculous. 3D is 71,538. UX is 57,855. CPU is 38,972. And RAM is 11,980. It's an incredible score. And again, one that you will struggle to beat at this current moment in time on the market. And obviously, I am well aware that the Samsung S8 is a beautiful phone and does uh, surpass this Xiaomi Mi 6 in the looks department. But of course, if that isn't the most important thing for you, or you don't feel that for that look is worth almost double the money, then of course, that's when you start looking at phones like this Xiaomi Mi 6. So as you can see here, one of the places you can get it from is banggood.com. And as you can see, it is uh, 300 and 45 pounds and 90 pence which is just insane if we go to us dollars that's 428 dollars for a phone that has one of the best specs on the market at the moment in time that is just incredible in my opinion so that's where you can get it from i will leave a link to that website in the video description below and if it's in stock it does come in black blue and white as well so i'm not sure of the actual stock for those colors but that is what's listed on the website so that was my review of the xiaomi mi 6 an amazing amazing phone like i said i am going to be trying to review the one plus five as well and do a comparisons between the two of course because they both have almost identical specs and it's just a case of it's a it's a toss up at the moment but i do want to get my hands on that to decide and again then you can decide which one you want to go for if you're in the market for a budget flagship phone which has all the latest specs but you don't want to pay them premium prices so remember to like and share if you did enjoy the video subscribe hit the notification button if you're new to the channel and also check out my second channel here and do the same on that if you want to be entered into the giveaway for the end of July this Android tablet so it's this Android tablet here and of course it's in champagne gold which is quite a nice little color as well so that can be yours uh, again a random selection out of everyone who does what I've just said so that is that I hope you did enjoy the video and I will see you in the next one it's SBYT peace out Hi guys, it's SBYT, and are you one of these people who constantly are losing things on your computer? You know, you're deleting files, deleting photos, emails, all that sort of stuff, and desperate to get that back. Or you've got some corrupt files that you might be able to recover as well. If you've got a problem with that, then I've got an amazing bit of software which could help you. And I also have a giveaway. I know, another giveaway. But this time, it's from the video sponsor, Wondershare. They've offered for this video to give away a one terabyte external portable hard drive. So I've got all of that coming up.